Uh, I'm not exactly from this area. I'm from Charlottesville, Virginia. Wow. Okay, so you close, but not not right. Not that close. Right? So not, not close enough that they released me Saturday. Is, yeah. Is like right. Point. Right. <laughs> so tell me about how Saturday went. Tell me about why they took you into custody. Tell me everything and tell me how it was. Okay. Well, we full well expected to go into custody on Saturday. We were we were kind of prepared to get arrested, but we also really anticipated to post some forfeit, give them hundred bucks, and go home. And, uh, deal with that and you know, just come back and be supported later. Um, Saturday sometime in the afternoon, yeah, so we were arrested, we were put in vans and trucks and uh, it was it was a really interesting sauna experience, would you say Ben? I would say so. Yeah, so we spent two to two and a half hours in, uh, in a really hot van or truck with, uh, with, with our hands behind our music. back. Yeah, it was a good time. Uh, went to the Park Police Station, uh, Anacostia Station, got processed there very quickly and put into little holding cells. There were 15 dudes in a 6 by 8 cell. Well, they left a bunch of us in the garage. Oh, oh you guys yeah. were the last crew. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So it like seemed like we went from small to semi-large to small again oh, yeah. in the holding cell. We were in there for a while, and then they processed us through that and had to put us back in the van to drive us to a place, another place, to put us in the cell that they were going to keep us in for two days. So. Yeah, we went to DC Central Holding. 5x7, stainless steel, B-quality welding, two dudes <laughs> on steel shelves. It really was. You should have seen the welding. It was awful. It oh, was awful. my God. It was basically, I mean, it's a perfect closet, perfect storage closet, but really, really, well, substandard. We figured it out. It was about 8x6, or 8x5. 5x7. 5x7? My God. 5x7 by 7 and a quarter, basically. Steel shelves, um, water worked in three quarters. Our water worked. We were working about three quarters of the cells. There were guys, it was, it was really cool. There were guys, excuse me, passing cups out of a little hole in the door. And then another hand coming out, grabbing the cup yeah. and filling water up and passing it back and stuff like that. But um, the spirits did. I, that first night was kind of a mess. You know, we, we knew full well that we had another full day. The time passed pretty slowly. But, yeah, it was very slowly. Right. And, uh, all in all, I mean, we knew that every bit of resistance we were, we were seeing was not only obviously a thorn for us, but like I could read the jailer's faces. Like yeah. that order was passed down, they were not happy to have 60 people to deal with. And, you know, and every every time I thought about this, this is effective. That, yeah. was, that was all I needed. I didn't really care about the steel. I, I was I was I was thinking, you know, it, it was not the greatest three days I spent in my life, but if this is what it takes to stop the pipeline, then that's how I'm going to do it. Exactly. And why is this issue so important to you guys personally? Well, personally for me, I just I mean I. I value our, our nature and our, our planet, our ecosystem, and we need to stop destroying it the way we are. And this is just the, one of the worst ways to do it. And I mean, the way we're doing it now is terrible, and this is ten times as, much, ten times as terrible, so this needs to stop. So that's why I'm here. And so how did you learn about the pipeline? Like, how, how did you guys come, uh, become involved with Tar Sands? Well, I've been involved in environmental issues for a long time, mostly, uh, you know, kind of soft core <laughs> activism and like you know trying to convince people to be more efficient be greener do other things and it you know and writing letters to senators and everything like that and it's just it hasn't been effective enough it hasn't been quick enough I mean because the, the environment's going down the drain faster than anyone had predicted it would and so and the Politicians are movers slower than anyone could have imagined they would. So we need to force them to move faster, or none of us are going to survive. And how about you? Pretty much it. I mean, a lot of people say this, but it's this one issue that really ought to apply and, and you know apply to and be very. I'm not very very or present to yeah. everyone. I mean, there's no one's exempted from this. You know, just because I, I go from an air conditioned house to an air conditioned car to an air conditioned building back to an air conditioned car back to an air conditioned house, that means squat. I mean, it, it, without without actually paying attention to causes, the climate is changing exceptionally rapidly, and we've got really strong evidence to show that we're doing it. And never mind. So climate change, uh, we're killing people just to get the tar sands. We're going to kill some people in the middle. We're going to kill pipeline. some we're wild wildlife. Some farmland. We're going to kill some wildlife. We're going to poison what a third of the water, yeah. fresh water in the United States. Um, and all of this is so that we can continue doing things the way that we've been doing, as opposed to just changing back. So if we take all the energy that we put into using the old way, and just turn it toward the new way. It's really easy. It's really feasible. It's not super quick. Don't get me wrong. But renewable energy is not. It's not some really. It, it's not. Yeah, the it's not technology. It's not. A, it's not that far out there. Like it's really easy to the do. The technology's been around for 20 years. Yeah, this off the really, really 
really rich people. They're, they're really rich. And make everybody survive. Less than 1% of people that are going to make money off this tar sands and, it's disgusting. and, and like save the 99% of the rest of us. So. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't spit jobs either. The, the jobs thing is cracked. You're going to get temporary yeah. jobs by the pipeline. The long term jobs are going to come from remediation. The right. only lasting job is going to come from cleanup. So. Exactly. If there were anything that you could say to people who know nothing about this issue, who may see you guys out here and may want to know, like, oh, hey, what is this about? Um, if you could give them, like, one brief message to move them to act, to move them to do, what would it be? I would say look at the VP oil spill and look at the oil, oil spill in the Yellowstone and look at the history of the companies that are doing this, and you realize it's not a good idea. Um, big, dirty oil kills. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Thank you guys so Thank much. You. And what are your names? And where are you from? Because I didn't get where you're from. Yeah, I'm Ben Martin. I'm from Connecticut. Ari Daniels, Charlottesville, Virginia.